welcome to Samwise. I'm your host, Sam, and I believe that every question in life can be answered by watching the Lord of the Rings Extended Editions, including the special features. Which brings me to the question that I have gotten most often since starting this podcast. (laughs) Most people say, that's funny. Are you serious? And the truth is, I'm very serious. I first saw Fellowship on VHS the year after it hit theaters. I was a young teen, and it absolutely transported me. Obviously, I saw the two towers in theaters in short order. So, as I was discovering these movies, I was also, like I said, a young teen, and I was miserable and friendless in middle school. My only friends were at my church youth group, and I'd known most of those kids my whole life. If I were a hobbit, this church, this particular youth group, was my shire. But darkness fell, as it so often does, and a pastor admitted some serious wrongdoing with a minor. It caused a ton of strife in my previously safe and welcoming church. There were people who brushed this aside, who thought it was no big deal. And then there were those who did believe and help the victim and other potential victims. And it caused a, a lot of a lot of clashing. Um, and as these dark things tend to do, a lot of dark memories from the past also resurfaced, um, attracted to this negativity and to this darkness. I was young, and so I found solace in Middle Earth. Each movie literally ends with Frodo turning to a character with my name and literally saying, I'm glad you're here, Sam. We can do this, Sam. Don't give up, Sam. When my Mima bought me the extended editions and I saw the love and care and passion that went into making these films, it reminded me that people can come together and make beautiful things. It also inspired me to eventually go on to film school. Now I get to be part of a giant global team of joy bringers. So yeah, I'm very serious. These movies caught me at a very formative time and they showcase some of our best modern artistic achievements. I love what they taught me, and I love sharing that with people. So, on to more questions. Hey Sam, Uh, so I'm currently trying to do a career change in my life where I'm going from being an animator and I'm trying to pursue writing. Is there anything in the Lord of the Rings that could give me some advice on the best way to do that while still being financially stable? As it happens, the director and writer commentary and special features have quite a lot to say about becoming a writer. So the films themselves are written by Peter Jackson, who is also the director, his partner Fran Walsh, and Philippa Boyens, and they were writing the film as it was being made. So I think the key here is that writing can happen anywhere and while lots of other jobs are going on, so I would continue being an animator. The other great thing is that being an animator allows you to position yourself as someone who is uniquely suited to tell character-driven stories. Now, I'm not sure what you're animating right now, but I do know that the animators in the VFX house at Weta are the ones that were responsible for bringing to life a lot of the characters um, in the crowds and stuff that were enhanced by CGI. Now, these movies are great at practical effects, but that doesn't mean that there weren't quite a lot of CGI critters running around as well. And the the thing about animators is that they are responsible for performance. They're responsible for building character. So you should stick with being an animator and really start analyzing how that influences your writing. Use it, because if there's anything these movies teach us, it's that storytelling is not just about the people putting words on the page. Everybody contributed, the cast, the crew, Richard Taylor's team at Weta, to make these worlds feel real. So I think continue animating, build your portfolio as a writer, and when you go to pitch yourself, remember that you're in such a unique place. You understand character better than a lot of people who are just writers. This is such an exciting thing, and you're in such a great place. I would also recommend if if you're animating for video games or for VFX, find the people who are making the stories that you're animating to and start connecting with them. Um, One of the cool things that Sir Richard Taylor talks about when building Lord of the Rings is that they recruited craftspeople who were way outside of the film industry to help make these worlds feel real and lived in. 
try to find animation that fits closer with the storytelling that you want to do. Many animation studios, and I only know this because I've worked for several, have pitch programs for people who aren't necessarily writers, but who have story ideas because all animation is such a creative and rich endeavor. So I would try to find those pitch programs, tell the stories that you want to tell, see if they catch anyone's eye, and work with the people that you know that are writing to figure out what you can do to get even better, to use your skills and and really hone them. Um, Best of luck. This is such an exciting career change, and it sounds like you're going to do great. This next question comes from the Samwise Google Voice line. It was a text message, and it reads, Samwise, my friend is going through a nasty divorce. How do I help him? Oh, man. Divorce is a kind of loss. It's a very particular kind, and it's really difficult, but it's two people separating themselves from a relationship that's no longer healthy or beneficial, and I'm really sorry to hear that your friend is going through this. King Theoden of Rohan had a similar separation when Grima Wormtongue betrayed him and let him get overtaken by Saruman. After Gandalf excised Saruman from his brain, <laughs> Gandalf had to let him grieve, had to let Theoden grieve the damage done to his sense of self, his kingdom, and his family. This relationship was so toxic that Theoden's son died as a result. Now, I hope nothing so tragic has happened to your friend, but I bet his sense of self has been kind of damaged by this. It's a huge shift in life and how he probably thinks of himself. And although there was a ton to be done in Theoden's case, they had to get everyone to Helm's Deep and everything, Uh, Gandalf didn't make him jump back into action right away. He gave him a chance to grieve, and he listened and grieved alongside his friend before coaxing him back into action. So allow your friend to be sad. Listen and be sad along with him. Keep him from wallowing too deep in it about what could have been, but this is hard. Let him own this as a loss. But also remind him of his good qualities. Uh, Gandalf continually reminded Theoden of the leader that he could be, and he encouraged him. And the same thing goes for you. Encourage your friend as he rebuilds a new life on his own. Remind him that he's perfectly capable and this is going to be great. It's a long road, but don't let it be a lonely one for your friend. Hey, Samwise. So a girl I'm seeing uses her rabbit to project her insecurities or judgments on me. What can I do about that? Thanks. This is definitely one of the more unusual questions I think I've received, but it's one that the Lord of the Rings is weirdly suited to answer. So the One Ring itself causes people's insecurities to grow and manifest so that when Gollum was Smeagol, and he was hanging out with his cousin Deagle, he became so nervous and so jealous that he murdered him. Bilbo yelled at Gandalf and told him it was his fault that he was angry. He attacked Frodo with that creepy puppet face. The ring is pretty toxic, and it is a huge red flag. I think that your girlfriend is behaving with her rabbit the same way that people do when they're holding on to the ring. I don't know if this red flag is big enough to be a deal breaker for you, but it certainly would be for me. I don't I don't like people who behave like golems. Uh, you, you might want to try talking to her, but I think saying, hey, babe, you're behaving like a golem is probably going to end it anyway. I mean, who am I kidding? This is weird. People who own rabbits are weird. Just break up with her. Good luck. Hi, Samwise. This is Lanny. I have a question. I work part-time but cook dinner every night. Is it too much to expect that my husband do dishes after I cook dinner? Thanks. Bye. It's absolutely not too much to ask that your husband do do the dishes. You're working hard, and you might not work full-time, but a job's a job, and dinner is work. Similarly, the Ghost Army in Return of the King, they, they didn't fight a ton of battles, they weren't involved in the whole war, but they fought one. And it was hard, and it was invaluable to work to the people that were living. It, it made their lives better and easier and, like, still happen. Just like dinner is vital to your husband. You know what Aragorn did after the battle? He didn't make them keep doing work, even though they were so important. He honored his commitment and their work, and he gave them a break. He went on to Mordor, let them go. So tell your husband to be more like Aragorn. 
He was, after all, a hero. Do the dishes, man. That brings us to the end of this week's journey. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. If you have a question that you'd like to have me answer, well, not me, the wisdom of the Lord of the Rings, um, please give a call to the Google Voice line at 608-561-2755, or you can email me at sam.wise.ath at gmail.com. Again, 608-561-2755 or sam.wise.ath at gmail.com. Both of those will be in the show notes. You can also follow me on Instagram at sammyjane613. Um, You can also DM me there for questions, or you can visit the After the Hype Facebook page. That's our parent podcast network. They have loads of great stuff, including content from other podcasts, including Venture Bros, a Venture Brothers podcast. They also have wonderful articles at athpod.com. Some of them are written by yours truly. And of course, every Thursday at 10 a.m., you can turn in, tune in to the original After the Hype podcast. It is wonderful. They've got some great episodes coming up. I highly encourage you to tune in. So again, that's athpod.com. You can go to the After the Hype Facebook page. Don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes. I'm still living in their feed. They are nice enough to let me be a couch crasher, but soon that will be changing. I will have my own feed, and you should rate and review me there on iTunes. You can also follow my dog, whose life is far more interesting than mine, at Saint underscore Lottie. That's Saint underscore L-A-D-D-I. So that's all I've got for now. See you next week, and keep those questions coming. Bye!